Once upon a time, in a small bright village, there lived a beautiful girl named Oluchuku. Oluchuku was 20 years old. Her family was big because her father had two wives. When Oluchuku's mother passed away, her father decided that Oluchuku should live with her stepmother, Madam Alice, in a nearby village. Madam Alice's house was in a village where the trees danced and the sun always seemed to smile. Oluchuku felt a little scared moving to a new place, but she was also excited to make new friends and see new places. Her father wasn't around much because he had to take care of the big farm they owned. But every month, he would come to visit Oluchuku. He brought her lovely gifts like juicy fruits, yummy foods, and sometimes shiny coins that made Oluchuku happy when they fill her pocket. Oluchuku liked her new home. It was different from where she used to live, but Madam Alice made it feel cozy. She had a little room with a window where she could see the moon at night. Madam Alice told her, This is your new home, Oluchuku. We will have good times here. And so, Oluchuku began her new life in the village, hoping to make her father proud and find happiness in her new home with Madam Alice. In the bright mornings, Oluchuku would hop out of bed, excited for the day. She and Madam Alice would go to the market together. Madam Alice had a little shop there where she sold beautiful fabrics. Some were as colorful as rainbows and others shimmered like stars in the night sky. Oluchuku loved the colors and the soft feel of the fabrics. As Oluchuku helped Madam Alice in the shop, she learned to fold the fabrics neatly and greet the customers with a big sunny smile. People came from all over to buy Madam Alice's beautiful fabrics. Oluchuku felt happy seeing all the friendly faces. But there was one man, Azuka, who came often to the shop. He wasn't like the other customers. Azuka was tall and always wore a bright smile, but Oluchuku sensed something strange about his visits. He didn't just come to buy fabrics. He seemed to have other intentions. Why does Azuka come here so often, Madam Alice? Oluchuku asked one day. Oh, he's just a regular customer, Alice replied with a smile. But her eyes looked away. At night, when they were walking back home from the shop, Alice would often tell Oluchuku, You go on home, dear. I'll be back soon. Oluchuku found this odd, but didn't question it at first. She would walk home alone, looking over her shoulder, wondering what Alice was up to. This became a regular pattern, and Oluchuku grew more curious. One cool evening, as the sun dipped behind the hills and painted the sky orange and pink, Madame Alice closed her fabric shop a little earlier than usual. She whispered to Oluchuku, Sweetheart, you go on ahead home. I'll be right behind you soon. Oluchuku nodded, but her curious heart fluttered with questions. She had seen Azuka earlier, lingering around the shop as the day grew dim. Why doesn't Madam Alice come home with me? She wondered. As Oluchuku started walking down the dusty path towards home, her little feet couldn't help but pause. She turned around and tiptoed back, hiding behind a large basket near the shop. She peeked out her eyes wide and watchful. There, under the soft glow of the market's lanterns, she saw Madame Alice and Azuka talking. They weren't just chatting, like in the shop. They stood close, and Azuka held Madame Alice's hand gently. Oluchuku's eyes grew even wider when she saw them walk away together into the quiet shadows of the evening. Feeling a mix of surprise and confusion, Oluchuku hurried back home, her mind buzzing like a busy bee. What should I do? She thought. She knew secrets were tricky, and this one felt big. As she lay in her bed that night, staring at the moon through her window, Oluchuku decided to keep what she saw a secret. She didn't want to upset Madame Alice or her father. Whenever her father visited, 
Oluchuku wanted to tell him, but was too afraid of what might happen. Maybe it's just a grown-up thing, she concluded, trying to calm the storm of thoughts. With that, Oluchuku took the secret away in her heart, hoping that the bright days at the shop and her games under the sun would keep her mind off the whispering shadows of the evening. One sunny afternoon, when the shop was closed for a village festival, Oluchuku was playing with colorful beads in the living room when she heard a gentle knock at the door. It was Azuka. His presence wasn't unusual in the market, but at their home, it felt different. Oluchuku watched as Madam Alice welcomed him with a warm, hushed excitement. Play here, Oluchuku. I have to talk to Azuka about something important, Madam Alice said, as they both disappeared into a room, leaving the door slightly ajar. Curious, Oluchuku tried to focus on her beads, but the quiet murmur of their voices pulled at her attention. She crept closer to the room, her heart thumping louder with each step. Oluchuku couldn't hear the words, but the tone was soft and serious. Soon, the door opened and Azuka stepped out, his eyes meeting Oluchuku's with a little surprise. Before Oluchuku could retreat, Azuka stood beside her, smiling gently. From his pocket, he pulled out some shiny coins and placed them in her small hand. These are for you, Oluchuku. Just a little gift, he whispered. But let's keep my visits our little secret, okay? Oluchuku felt the cold coins in her palm and looked up into Azuka's eyes, nodding silently. The coins sparkled, yet they felt heavy with unspoken words. Madam Alice came out and patted her shoulder, her smile wide, but her eyes telling Oluchuku to remember her promise. As Azuka left, Oluchuku sat there, the coins still in her hand, feeling the weight of the secret grow. She wondered why secrets had to be kept with gifts, why the whispers needed silence paid in shiny coins. That night, as she hid the coins under her pillow, Oluchuku felt the first sting of something she couldn't quite understand. Was it guilt, confusion, or perhaps the heavy cloak of grown-up worries draping over her young shoulders? The pattern continued. Every time Azuka visited, he brought something for Oluchuku, a new dress, a pair of shoes, or a few coins. Each time, he reminded her to keep their meetings a secret. One day, as Oluchuku admired a beautiful necklace Azuka had given her, Alice came up to her and said, Remember, Oluchuku, this is our little secret. No need to tell anyone, especially not your father. Oluchuku nodded again, feeling the weight of the secret growing heavier. She wanted to trust Alice and Azuka, but she couldn't shake off the feeling that something wasn't right. Yet, she kept quiet, hoping that her loyalty would be rewarded and that everything would turn out fine in the end. As days turned into weeks, Oluchuku noticed a change in the rhythm of their home. Madam Alice started bringing more visitors to the house. At first, it was just Azuka, but soon, other men came, each different, like the many fabrics in the shop. Some were tall and spoke in loud, booming voices, while others were quiet, their smiles tucked away as they hurried through the door. Each visit left Oluchuku with a new token, a shiny new coin, a small toy, or a bar of sweet-smelling soap. These gifts piled up in her little treasure box, each one a reminder of the visitors and the secret she was meant to keep. One evening, as the golden sun dipped below the horizon, Madame Alice sat down beside Oluchuku. Her voice was soft but serious. These friends of mine, they are very special, Oluchuku. It's important they feel welcome and that their visit stayed just between us. Oluchuku nodded, understanding the importance of her role in keeping the house's secrets, though she felt uneasy about the strange pattern that was unfolding. The house that once echoed with the laughter from her games 
now whispered with hushed voices and fleeting shadows. With each new token, Oluchuku felt a growing sense of responsibility. She knew these weren't just gifts. They were silent agreements, bonds of secrecy that connected her to Madame Alice and her mysterious guests. Yet, as she lay in bed each night, Oluchuku couldn't help but wonder about the stories behind these tokens, about the silent burdens they brought into her one simple and sunny world. As Oluchuku grew older, she began to notice more about the world around her. She saw how Alice managed her life and relationships, and slowly, she started to follow in her stepmother's footsteps. One bright morning at the market, as Oluchuku was helping Madame Alice arrange a new batch of vibrant fabrics, her eyes caught sight of Madhu. Madhu was a young man with a kind smile who sold fruits across the square. His laughter was like music and his friendly nose to everyone made him well loved in the village. As the days went by, Oluchuku found herself looking forward to their little chats. Madhu would bring her a juicy mango or a sweet smelling orange during his breaks. His visits to their stall became the highlights of her days and soon Oluchuku felt her heart flutter whenever she saw him. One afternoon, Madhu shyly asked Oluchuku if he could visit her at home. Remembering how Madame Alice handled her visitors, Oluchuku hesitated at first, but the innocence of her own feelings and the joy that bubbled up at the thought of spending more time with Madhu pushed her doubts away. Yes, Madhu, you can come and let's have fun, she agreed, smiling wider than she had in months. The first time Madhu came over, the house felt different, a place filled with giggles and shared secrets about dreams and favorite things rather than the heavy whispers of Madame Alice's guests. Oluchuku showed Madhu her collection of tokens, explaining they were gifts from friends of Madame Alice, making him promise to keep it just between them. From there, Oluchuku took Madhu into her room and they spent some happy times having fun. As their meetings grew more frequent, Oluchuku, influenced by the pattern she saw with Madame Alice, started to believe that this was how relationships were meant to be, hidden and hushed, yet thrilling. Madhu, happy to be close to Oluchuku, didn't question the secrecy, enchanted by her smiles and the quiet moments they shared away from the bustling market. But with each visit, as Oluchuku fell deeper in love, she unwittingly stepped further into the tangled web of secrets that draped over the house, blurring the lines between innocent love and the shadowed patterns she had learned from Madame Alice. As Oluchuku's relationship with Madhu grew, she found herself more and more influenced by Alice's ways. One evening, as they were closing the shop, Alice decided to talk to Oluchuku. Oluchuku, come here, Alice said, motioning for her to sit down. I've noticed you and Madhu are getting quite close. Yes, Madam Alice, I really like him, Oluchuku replied, smiling. Alice looked at her with a serious expression. It's good to have someone special, but you are young, Oluchuku. You should enjoy your youth and not settle too quickly. You see, life is full of experiences. Don't tie yourself down too soon. Oluchuku listened carefully. What do you mean, Madame Alice? Alice leaned in and said, Don't put all your trust in one person. It's good to have options. See other men besides Madhu. This way. You'll know what you truly want and enjoy your life to the fullest. Oluchuku was surprised but also intrigued by Alice's advice. Do you really think that's a good idea? She asked. Yes, my dear, Alice assured her. Trust me. Enjoy your youth, meet different people and live your life. You'll be happier for it. Oluchuku took Alice's advice to heart. She started seeing different men, just as Alice suggested. Today, she would go out with the tall one, tomorrow with the short one, 
and other days with the fat or slim one. Each man brought something different to her life, and Oluchuku enjoyed the attention and variety. She became well known and the village for her beauty and charm. Many men admired her, and Oluchuku reveled in the admiration. She felt free and independent, much like Alice. One evening, as Oluchuku was getting ready to meet another suitor, Alice smiled at her and said, See, Oluchuku, you're living your best life now. Oluchuku nodded, feeling a sense of satisfaction. She believed she was making the most of her youth, just as Alice had advised. The village buzzed with talk about Oluchuku, but she paid no mind. She was living for herself, enjoying each moment and exploring the world of possibilities before her. As Oluchuku continued to see different men, word spread quickly throughout the village. People began to gossip about her many relationships, and soon Oluchuku became a well-known figure for her beauty and her numerous admirers. I have you heard about Oluchuku? One woman whispered to her friend at the market. She's always with a different man. Yes, I've seen her with the tall one and the short one. I wonder what Madam Alice thinks about all this, the friend replied, shaking her head. The gossip reached Madam Alice, but she was unfazed. When people questioned her about Oluchuku's behavior, she always had the same response. Oluchuku is living her best life, Alice would say with a smile. She is young and free. Let her enjoy her youth. Andolkas Opake. One day, a group of village elders approached Alice at her shop. Madam Alice, one of them began. We are concerned about Oluchuku. She is young and should be more careful. Alice looked at them calmly and replied, Oluchuku is an adult. She makes her own choices. She deserves to live her life and explore her options. We should support her, not judge her. The elders left, still murmuring among themselves, but Alice stood firm. She believed in her advice and was proud of Oluchuku for embracing her independence. Oluchuku, on the other hand, noticed the whispers and glances but chose to ignore them. She felt empowered by Alice's support and continued to live her life as she pleased. She enjoyed the company of different men each bringing something unique to her world. One evening, as Oluchuku and Alice sat together, Oluchuku said, People talk about me, Madam Alice. They gossip and judge. Alice patted her hand gently. Let them talk, Oluchuku. You are living your life on your terms. That's what matters. Be true to yourself and don't let others' opinions bring you down. Oluchuku nodded, feeling reassured. She knew that as long as she had Alice's support, she could face anything. The village gossip might never stop, but Oluchuku was determined to live her life fully, just as Alice had taught her. One bright morning, Oluchuku's father decided to visit unexpectedly. He missed his daughter and wanted to see how she was doing. As he approached the house, he saw Oluchuku run out, clutching her stomach. She looked pale and sick. Suddenly, she bent over and vomited. Oluchuku, my dear, what's wrong? Her father asked, rushing to her side, his face filled with worry. Before Oluchuku could answer, Madam Alice came out of the house. Oh, it's nothing serious, Alice said quickly. Oluchuku has had a little fever for the past few days. But don't worry, I'm taking good care of her. Oluchuku's father looked at Oluchuku. Concern etched on his face. Are you sure, Alice? She looks very sick. Yes, yes, Alice replied, smiling reassuringly. She just needs some rest. I'll make sure she gets better. Satisfied with Alice's explanation, but still worried, Oluchuku's father stayed for a while, then left, promising to come back soon. Once he was gone, Alice turned to Oluchuku with a serious expression. Oluchuku, come inside, Alice said firmly. They went into the house and Alice sat Oluchuku down. Tell me the truth, Oluchuku. Have you missed your period? 
Oluchuku looked down, her eyes filling with tears. Yes, Madam Alice, I haven't had it for two months. Alice's face grew pale. She quickly checked Oluchuku and confirmed her suspicions. Oluchuku, you're pregnant, she said softly. Oluchuku's eyes widened with fear. What? How can that be? I don't know who the father is, Madam Alice. I've been with so many men. Alice sighed deeply, realizing the gravity of the situation. We need to think about what to do next. This is serious, Oluchuku. If your father finds out, there will be big trouble. Oluchuku nodded, tears streaming down her face. She felt overwhelmed and scared, unsure of what the future held. Alice took her hand, trying to offer some comfort. We'll figure this out together, Oluchuku, Alice said. But for now, we need to keep this a secret. We can't let anyone know until we decide what to do. Oluchuku nodded again, trusting Alice to guide her through this difficult time. She knew that their secret was now heavier than ever, and the days ahead would be challenging. Oluchuku was terrified of what her father would do if he found out about the pregnancy. After discussing it with Alice, they decided that the only option was to abort the pregnancy. Alice went to a local healer and got a drug that was supposed to terminate the pregnancy. Here, Oluchuku Alice said, handing her the medicine. Take this and everything will be fine. Oluchuku, desperate and scared, took the drug as Alice instructed. That night, she experienced severe stomach pain and lost a lot of blood. She thought the drug had worked and both she and Alice hoped that their problem was solved. But as the days turned into weeks, Oluchuku's stomach continued to grow. The drug had not worked and the pregnancy was still progressing. Oluchuku's fear and anxiety grew with her belly. Oluchuku, we need to come up with another plan, Alice said, worry etched on her face. People are starting to notice. Indeed, the villagers were beginning to talk. They saw Oluchuku's growing belly and started to whisper among themselves. Have you seen Oluchuku? One woman asked her friend. Her stomach is getting bigger. Do you think she's... It looks like it, the friend replied. But who could be the father? She's been with so many men. The gossip spread quickly and soon everyone in the village knew. Oluchuku and Alice couldn't keep the secret any longer. They had to face the reality of the situation. One day, as Oluchuku was walking through the market, an elderly woman stopped her. Oluchuku, my dear, is it true? Are you with child? Oluchuku felt her face flush with shame. She nodded slightly, not knowing what to say. The woman shook her head and walked away, whispering to others as she went. Back at home, Oluchuku and Ali sat together, trying to figure out what to do next. We can't hide this anymore, Alice said. The whole village knows. We need to find a solution before your father finds out. Oluchuku nodded, feeling a deep sense of dread. She knew that the truth would come out soon, and she had no idea how to face it. The failed plan had only made things worse, and now they were out of options. The weight of their secret was becoming too much to bear. Desperate to find a solution, Oluchuku decided to visit all the men she had been with, hoping one of them would take responsibility for the pregnancy. She started with Madu, the handsome young man she had once loved deeply. Madu, I need to talk to you, Oluchuku said, her voice trembling as she stood before him. What is it, Oluchuku? Madu asked, looking concerned. I'm pregnant and I think you might be the father, she said, hoping he would step up. Madu's face turned pale. No, Oluchuku, it can't be mine. We were careful. You must be mistaken, he said, backing away. Heartbroken and desperate, Oluchuku moved on to the next man and the next, but each one denied being the father. It's not mine they all said, leaving Oluchuku feeling more hopeless with each denial. As Oluchuku went from man to man, 
the news spread quickly through the village. People whispered and gossiped, pointing at her as she walked by. The rumors eventually reached her father's ears and he decided to confront her. One evening, Oluchuku's father arrived at Alice's house unannounced. He found Oluchuku sitting outside, her eyes swollen from crying. Oluchuku, I need to talk to you, he said, his voice stern and filled with concern. Oluchuku looked up, her heart pounding. Yes, Papa? I've heard the rumors. Are you pregnant? He asked his eyes searching hers for the truth. Oluchuku nodded, tears streaming down her face. Yes, Papa, I am. Who is the father? He demanded, his voice rising with anger. Oluchuku sobbed uncontrollably. I don't know, Papa. I've been with many men, and none of them will admit to being the father. Her father's face turned red with fury. How could you let this happen, Oluchuku? I trusted Alice to look after you. At that moment, Alice came outside. What's going on here? She asked, trying to remain calm. Oluchuku is pregnant, and she doesn't know who the father is, her father said angrily. This is your fault, Alice. I trusted you to take care of her. Alice tried to defend herself. I did my best. Oluchuku is an adult and makes her own choices. You encouraged her to see other men her father shouted. You failed her and now look at the mess we're in. Oluchuku's father was devastated and angry. He felt betrayed by Alice and deeply disappointed in Oluchuku. He knew that the situation could no longer be hidden and that the consequences would be severe for everyone involved. Oluchuku's father was furious and heartbroken. He confronted Alice with all the anger and disappointment he had kept inside for so long. Alice, he began, his voice shaking with rage. I trusted you to take care of Oluchuku, but instead you led her down this path. I suspected your infidelity long ago, but I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Now I see I was wrong. Alice tried to speak, but Oluchuku's father cut her off. I can't forgive you for what you've done. I am divorcing you, Alice. You must leave this village and never come back. Alice's face turned pale. She knew there was no point in arguing. She had lost everything. With her head bowed in shame, she packed her belongings and left the village, never to return. Oluchuku's father took over Alice's shop, ensuring it would continue to provide for Oluchuku and himself. He then took Oluchuku back to their own village, hoping to shield her from the gossip and judgment of others. Life was not easy for Oluchuku after returning to her father's village. Her pregnancy was no longer a secret and she had to face the consequences of her actions. She gave birth to a beautiful baby, but the circumstances of the child's conception weighed heavily on her. Oluchuku lived in shame constantly reminded of her past mistakes. The villagers whispered about her and she felt their judgmental eyes on her wherever she went. Despite her father's support, Oluchuku struggled to find peace and happiness. She spent her days helping her father in the shop, raising her child and reflecting on the choices she had made. The carefree life she once enjoyed was gone replaced by a constant sense of regret and the heavy burden of responsibility. Madame Alice, on the other hand, disappeared from their lives completely. She moved to a distant village, far away from the shame and the life she once knew. She never returned, and her name slowly faded from the villagers' memories. In the end, Oluchuku learned a hard lesson about the consequences of her actions, and the importance of making wise choices. She vowed to raise her child with the values she had learned too late, hoping to give them a better life and a future free from the mistakes of the past. Now, their viewers, who do you think was at fault? Was it Oluchuku's father who knew the kind of woman Alice was before taking his only daughter to her, or Alice herself for not cautioning Oluchuku? because she was also doing the same thing and won't want 
her secrets out. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, share it with your family and friends, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more enchanting tales like this one. Goodbye.